Oh, hello there. So in today's video, we'll be discussing the concepts and features of fundus photography, as well as communication with the patient. Now, there are many different brands and models of retinal cameras, but today we'll be specifically using a Canon CR DJI non-mitriatic retinal camera. A fundus camera essentially consists of a specialized microscope attached to a flash-enabled camera. Fundus photography, as its name suggests, is simply taking a photo of the back of the eye. The main structures of the eye that can be visualized on a fundus photo are the central and peripheral retina, optic disc and macula. There are several key components of the fundus camera. The on-off switch, the lens cover, fundus camera screen which is used to ensure that the eye is in correct alignment and the fundus is in clear focus, the lock wheel, the joystick, the height adjustment rim used to make fine adjustments, the light intensity wheel, the SLR camera unit, the setting buttons under the monitor used for flash intensity or setting up specific tool features, diopter compensation slider used for high myopic or hypermetropic patients, the alignment button, the fixation target knob which is used to change the position of the fixation target, the infrared filter, a small pupil knob for pupils that are smaller than 4mm in size, and lastly the focusing wheel to adjust for refractive error. Setting up the patient and informing them about the test. Hi, how are you? That's good, so uh, my name is John, I'll be your orthoptist for today. So we'll just be taking a couple of photos of your retina, just the back of your eye, just using this device here. Um, it's a pretty quick and simple procedure, it'll only take a couple of minutes and we won't need to use any eye drops or anything like that. Okay, but will it be painful? Uh, no, it won't be painful, there'll just be a flash like uh, with a camera and I'll let you know when that flash is coming so you can prepare for yourself for it. Before setting up the patient, use an alcohol wipe to clean the chin rest and forehead bar to maintain hygiene. Yes, yeah, so before we get started, I'll just quickly clean this up for you, just for hygiene purposes. Next, ask the patient to rest their chin on the chin rest and forehead against the forehead bar. Adjust the height of the table appropriately, paying close attention to patient comfort. Alright, so do you mind just taking your glasses off for me and just putting them on the table? Yeah. Alright, cool. So now I just need you to put your chin on the chin rest just here and head up against the head rest. Alright, so is that comfortable or is it too high or too low for you? Mm, it's a bit too high. A bit too high? Alright, I'll just... Is that better? Adjust the height of the chin rest so that the patient's eye is aligned with the white mark on the bar of the chin rest. Fondus photos should preferably be taken in dim conditions, but for the purpose of this video, we'll be taking it under normal room light. So, I'm we'll just be doing your uh, right eye first. So, do you see an orange light yes. in front of you? Yeah. So, just keep looking at that light and I'll let you know when you need to do anything else. Firstly, we align the circle on the screen with the patient's iris and pupil. Move the joystick forward and backwards and rotate the height adjustment wheel until the upper and lower sections of the pupil meet and ensure that the three white dots are in position. Next, we press the alignment button and the patient's fundus should appear on the screen. Instruct the patient to look at the green light slash fixation target. Alright, now do you see a green light? Yep, so let's keep looking at that green light now. Move the joystick forward or backwards, left or right, to ensure that the two white dots are in focus and positioned within the two grooves located at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Adjust the focus wheel until the cross hairs on the stick are aligned. Lastly, press the trigger button to take the photo. Do you mind just, um, taking a couple of quick blinks for me? All right, now just keep your eye open. I'll Taking now. Once you've taken the disc macular image, proceed to capture the nasal, temporal, inferior and superior retinal image by repeating the alignment process but moving the fixation target knob to the desired position. In general, move the knob in the opposite direction of peripheral retina you wish to capture. Moving the knob downwards will take a photo of the superior retina. Another feature of Canon CR DJI non midriatic retinal camera is the flash setting. Adjust the flash intensity as required using the buttons under the plus and minus signs on the fundus camera screen. F0 is the lowest flash setting 
while F14 is the highest flash setting. Alright, very good. Results and interpretation. In certain diseases, it is important that we do not consider the disc macular image in isolation. Superior, inferior, nasal and temporal fundus images have to be taken as well to give an overview of the whole retina and fundus. In this case, this patient has a particularly waxy optic disc. Development of bone spicule pigmentation at the peripheral retina can also be observed. Although not as conspicuous as the other signs, attenuation of the blood vessels in the retina can also be seen. These are the classic signs of a patient with retinitis pigmentosa. Now we'll present some examples of badly captured fundus photos. We will also give some advice on how to avoid these common mistakes. In this case, we can see that the patient has blinked when the fundus photo was taken, resulting in a blurred and incomplete image of the fundus. It is imperative to instruct the patient not to blink when the fundus photo is taken. The patient may blink normally at any other time to prevent the excessive drying of the eye. A dry eye may also lead to a blurred fundus photo. When dry eye is suspected, ask the patient to blink several times to lubricate the eye before continuing. This depicts an incorrectly taken fundus photo that is out of focus and somewhat obscured. The orthoptist taking the fundus photo has to be extremely careful and meticulous in ensuring proper alignment and that the picture of the fundus is in clear focus before capturing the image. Make sure the three white dots are in clear focus and aligned with the pupil before pressing the alignment button. Now we'll look at the pros and cons of fundus photography. The pros. Does not require pupil dilation. Is easy to use and does not require a skilled user. Captured images can be examined by a specialist at another location or time. Provides photo documentation for future reference can recreate considerably large areas of the fundus than what we can see at any one time with handheld ophthalmoscopes. Cons. High cost of equipment, not portable, not the gold standard. A major limitation of fundus photography is that it obtains a 2D representation of the 3D semi-transparent retinal tissue projected onto the imaging plane. Media opacities can affect quality and clarity of the image. It is important to note that fundus photography is not the gold standard for fundus examination and should not be used as a basis for diagnosis. Instead, it is merely used to supplement other ocular examinations, such as binocular indirect ophthalmoscopy, which are more reliable in diagnosing uh, retinal disorders. It is also a useful tool in objectively measuring torsion as well as documenting and recording progression of diseases over time.